Hey, welcome to JG3 Reviews. My name is James and I review fountain pens and pens and all that kind of stuff. So today I've got one that is kind of one of those pens that I like to find in that it's, it's cheap, it's inexpensive. This channel, I like to focus on things that are a good value and that sometimes means they're cheap and inexpensive. Sometimes it means they might cost a little bit more, but they still have that, that good value proposition. And this is one that, that hits both ends of the thing. This pen was a dollar, okay? I've, I, you don't always find a good pen for a dollar, but I've actually found some really good fountain pens for a dollar. One of my favorites was a dollar sixty-eight, including shipping from China, a Jinhao 911 stainless steel pen with a hooded nib, Great pen, and I really like it, use it all the time. Well, I saw this one at Daiso, and if you're not familiar, Daiso is a Japanese dollar store, basically. And lots of cool stuff in there. A lot of it's, it's things that you don't find in a typical American store. And so I always like to run in and check one out. Usually it's real close to an 84 degree C uh, bakery from Taiwan, and those are really good too. If you can find it, get the squid ink roll with bacon and gruyere. That thing is awesome. Anything with bacon, I mean, come on. So, anywho, back to the pen. We get uh, this pen for a dollar at Daiso, and I bought it really, this is a long time ago, I bought it just to see is this pen, is it any good for a dollar? Because that's awfully cheap, and fountain pens are more expensive to make than regular pens, so you know, you kind of wonder what, where, what corners did they cut, and is it actually going to be any good? If that's your question, if you're looking for a cheap, inexpensive pen, if you just want to try a pen or give a pen to your kid that you don't mind if they tear up, or you don't mind if you lose, or whatever, you might want to check this one out. But before we draw any conclusions, let's look at the design of the pen, how the pen writes, and give you all the plus and the minuses of the Daiso $1 fountain pen. Let's flip this camera and get started. All right, so maybe like me, you're curious, how much pen do you get for a dollar? Well, you definitely get a dollar's worth, right? <laughs> so there is that. Uh, there are some great pens that can be found for a dollar, great fountain pens. So that might surprise some of you new to fountain pens. Maybe you've bought into the myth that only good pens are pens that cost, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 and up. Uh, that's not really true, no matter how many people may tell you it is. However, is this one of those pens that's surprising? surprisingly good or is it a dud? Well, let's look and see first, looking at the design. You'll notice that this, this turns fairly freely, so that gives you kind of an idea. It does uh, cap securely and it will post securely. Uh, it's just kind of loose like that, but I've had some, some better and, and nicer and more expensive pens that do the same thing. There's not a lot to talk to you about here about the design. It, it's a pen. It has a couple of uh, metal rings here. In the center between cap and barrel, you have a plastichrome, that's what I'm going to call it, a plastichrome uh, finial at the bottom of the barrel. And at the top, you have uh, no decoration whatsoever. It's just the metal and it's smooth over and it's painted. The clip, uh, somebody decided to rip off uh, Jordy's glasses for the clip a little bit. And so it has these grooves cut into it. It's, it's a good strong clip, typical of a pen, so not really much to talk about there either. The finish is nicely done for a dollar. I think, you know, it, it looks like it'll wear normally and nothing to complain about there. A very light pen, I will tell you that. If you like light pens, and some people do, then you'll like that about it. When you open up the cap, you find a plastic, a black plastic grip, a uh, stainless steel, or a steel rather, a steel nib, and uh, yeah, that's what you find. Plastic feet. It's just kind of a typical inexpensive fountain pen. You may find that the diameter of the grip for some people, it is for me, uh, it's a little thin. Uh, and so, you know, depending on your preferences, of course, not a lot of choices necessarily in American stores uh, or stores in America, uh, not a lot of choices for fountain pens at a dollar. So beggars can't be choosers, but it is a little bit of a narrow pen, especially as you go down that grip. Let's look at the nib. The nib, it's, it's a steel nib. It looks to be a number five, of course, plastic feed as is typical. And it's hard to read, really. It's a decorated nib, but it's not very deeply stamped or engraved. And so the name is either Orillo or Acrylo. Uh, I'm guessing Crillo, but uh, the first letter is barely there. So there is that. And this is a medium nib. All right, so let's see how this dollar pen writes. 
This is, again, a day so. And if you're not familiar, but maybe you've passed one in your town, we, we go to Deso when we are in uh, Carrollton, Texas, in the met Metroplex between Dallas and Fort Worth. Great little store, run in there, all kinds of cool stuff. And I don't know, it didn't have a name, just fountain pen, so I'm just going to call it the dollar pen. Although I think that name was taken about 60 years ago uh, by uh, Estabrook. Anyway, we'll move on from that. Uh, it would, wouldn't be the only thing Estabrook's ever had that's copied, would it? Unfortunately. And this is a uh, this is a blue cartridge. Nothing exciting there. Not, not a lot to write home about. Just a normal blue cartridge, the one that comes with the pen. And you can get a package of five refills, short international refills, for I think probably a dollar at Daiso as well. Not everybody likes cartridges. I don't usually use them. Uh, but there are times when they're handy. And if you're just trying out a pen, uh, sometimes that's a nice way to go. I'm going to be quiet. and You can see how this nib writes on this paper. Fairly dry. You know I can do those all the time except for when I'm on camera. Cracks me up. I don't know what happens. Turn on the camera and it goes loopy. But uh, the pen, as you can see, I think it keeps up quite well. Writes smoothly. Just run down the paper there. No lines, so you don't know what you're going to get. So it writes pretty well, actually, I think. It's it's fairly smooth. It's not scratchy. Let me put it that way. Uh, there's not a lot of feedback, and it's not scratchy. Uh, there's more to being a smooth nib than that, but not really bad at all for a dollar pen, I will tell you that. No idea the durability of the pen. Uh, you know, you're, you're paying a dollar, and it's probably considered by Deso to be a, a fairly disposable thing. But it's actually cheaper, now that I've said that, than most disposable fountain pens. So that might be something to keep in mind. Maybe you're looking for something that, uh, like a Pilot Varsity, an excellent, by the way, disposable, I'm going to say semi-disposable, because you can refill those. Uh, and and it, for some people, it's worth their while. Uh, but this one you can refill and use and you know, if you if you get several refills out of it, you're already ahead of a ballpoint pen in that game. So there is that. So I would uh, would I recommend this pen? Well, the pluses and minuses. Uh, it it's a dollar pen, and that's a plus. It it looks and feels like a dollar pen, and that's probably a minus. I have some dollar pens that look and feel like twenty dollar pens. So I would say that that's that's a wash on that part. It is a good deal, uh, but it's 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 a cheap pen. However, have I had problems with it? The only problem I've had with this pen is that it does dry out quickly. There is a plastic sleeve in that cap, but it just doesn't. I don't think it goes all the way down, and it just doesn't seal well enough to keep the pen from drying out in a shorter period of time than I'm used to with a lot of my other pens. Like, neither one of these dries out. This is a Waterman Graduate, which I'll review soon. And this is that Black Forest that was in the last review. And then I have a ton of others that, that just last and last without drying out. So that's really the only downside I've had. Haven't had problems with skipping. Haven't had problems with uh, hard starts or anything like that. So there, you know, except for if I let the pen dry out. So that's kind of on me if I let that happen. Other than that, you know, it's a good, cheap, uh, inexpensive pen. If you're in a pinch, want a fountain pen, but forgot yours on a trip, and there's a day so, well, there you go. If you're wanting to uh, introduce somebody to fountain pens, there are better introductions. But if it was, if it's, say, a child and you're not sure, maybe your hesitance is that they're going to bang the thing up and tear it up or lose it, then, you know, this might be an inexpensive way to make it a low-risk introduction but not a bad not a bad pen at all but that's the day so one dollar pen god bless you thank you for watching like subscribe share with somebody you think might be interested and have a great week